Hey everyone, I had a pretty good day in Manchester de today. I had some fun at the yeah, I had some fun at the match room press conference. I managed to get a little bit of time with Derek Chisora. He wasn't in the best mood, but he, he was right towards me. He, he remembered me, even though we have not met in how many years. So yeah, it was a good day. So if you just sort of look around, just 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 in the train station, our Manche Manchester Victoria station, just thinking what where should, what shall I do now what shall I shall I catch a train could go anywhere I wanted I got people's phone numbers today so it looks like I have some sparring sessions coming up I am pretty happy coming to Manchester was worth it I met Eddie Hearn I was unable to get the big Eddie Hearn interview because Eddie Hearn had to catch a train but I'm not really fussed I'm you know I'm sure I'll get Eddie Hearn at some point I don't know if I'm going to ask him hard questions, so I'm probably just going to go easy on Hearn. Because as I said, I am still annoyed about the criticism I got on my video. Like when I, when I said, when I interviewed Eddie Hearn in September, and then you know you have all these people trying to tell me, oh, you know, you didn't go hard enough, you didn't show the same energy. Well, you idiots, I would have if I had more than 12 minutes. So, yeah, I'm still annoyed about that. So, screw it. I don't think I am going to ask Eddie Hearn any hard questions. And if you don't like it, you idiots can get on a train. You can go to Manchester or Leeds or wherever Eddie Hearn pops up next. Or he has been going to America a lot. I can't go to America because I'm not taking any vaccination. If you want to see a, a hard Eddie Hearn interview, do it yourself. And you find that interviewing Eddie Hearn is not the problem. Getting to him is the problem. Every time you go near the man, he's surrounded by people. But he came up to me, he came up to me today, shook my hand, said hello, yeah, nice to see you here. I mean, he's a nice man. He's not asking him hard questions is not a problem. Obviously, some people in boxing, or maybe a lot of people, they probably will have a problem if you if you try going hard. But Eddie Hearn's one of the few people who's not. So yeah, I'm still annoyed about that. So I don't think I'll be asking Eddie Hearn any hard questions. But this video is not really about Hearn so much. Just letting you know, Time Booth, you little loser. Whatever you're doing, you're sat at home, as usual, as you told me yourself, smoking whatever stuff you smoke. You, you admitted to me that, obviously, I know you smoke weed, as per your own personal confession. And obviously, as you told me before, you know, still, still a loser. As you told me, you have no woman, nothing going on. Just sit there watching pornography all day by yourself. No friends, no nothing. Like obviously, I'm out, I'm, I'm out here having fun. I'm enjoying myself, meeting people, getting phone numbers. Got sparring sessions coming up. But you can you can sit at home hiding time and pretending you, you know, like obviously we both know you watch my videos. And look, anytime you want it, I, I will take you on tomorrow, six months from now though, give me six months. I'll take you on in June. Forget December, I know I said December in the first video, December's too long. May, June, June, I'll take you on any day of the week. I will take you on any time in June. You know, I I, was, I was, I'm not gonna take any cheap shots at your accomplishments. And to me, I don't know, I tell you the truth. I think Coogan Cassius is a nasty, nasty person. I don't like Coogan Cassius, but you, you know, I just feel sorry for you. You're just a sad person. You know, you once, you once had a fighting career going, and I'm not going to take any cheap shots at your boxing career. Actually, you know, you do what you had to do. You know, you fought Chris Eubank Jr. You got stopped, and I, I'm not going to take any shots. If I was going to say anything about your fights, I would just say it. But nothing wrong with that. You fought Eubank, Marcus Morrison. You had, you know, you had some decent fights. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, you can only do the best you can do. So obviously, I can't, you know, I can't take shots at your career because of what have I done in boxing? You know. Also, I'm, I promise, I'm not going to take any public shots or any sublimin subliminal shots. You know, you, when I say subliminal, you know, when you imply something, I'm not going to imply anything. But also, I'm not like that. If I'm going to say something, I'll just say it. You know, you did what you did in your career. Nothing wrong with that. I don't look down on your career. Nothing wrong with that. However, I want you. I'm hungry. I, I want. I want all the. I want all the smoke. I want the problems. You know, I want you and me to get it on in June. 
don't think I haven't forgotten your time, but if, I mean, you know, like you come with energy, like you bully Coogan and all these people, but they're not fighters, and you're not doing it to their face. Get in the ring with me and try me. Give me six months, and you're going to be in trouble because people can. And oh, oh, and I want to make it clear. I admit that Time Booth is the favourite. I'm not disputing that. If you've got any money, I suggest you bet on Time Booth to to beat me. No question about it. It doesn't mean he will beat me, but on paper, the, the odds are in his favour. The likelihood is that this will be easy for him. I'm not disputing that. And obviously, I'm, I'm going to let you come in whatever weight you like. I haven't got an issue. Do, do whatever you want. You want to come in big and heavy, you can come in big and heavy. You want to keep taking whatever weed and cocaine you take, feel free. I mean, your life's sad enough, so obviously, I, I, I suppose drugs sort of take the edge off. You know, you want to keep watching pornography, whatever rubbish you do, then go for it. But it is going to be very embarrassing. Once my momentum builds up and I become more famous, which, you know, I am getting there. If you don't take me on and you duck me, that's going to be embarrassing. Ducking a much smaller man who's had much less boxing experience. I'll let you come in the ring whatever weight you like. You can choose everything. You can choose the boxing gym, you can choose the gloves, whatever you want to do. If you want to come in the ring using performance enhancing drugs, take them. I'm not scared. I still think I'll get in there and do you over. I still think I'll take you. You know, and yeah, I know people are going to say I'm delusional, but that's my responsibility, not anyone else's. I'm a very intelligent person. I understand boxing. You know, and if you, if you listen to my tone of voice, I'm not an emotional person. You know, I have thought I have thought carefully about should I call Time Booth out or not. I know what I'm doing. Listen to my voice. I'm not getting emotional. Like, look, look where I am at a train station. You know, you don't see me. I'm not an emotional person. You don't see me kicking and screaming. Not about Time Booth. I mean, it's just sad. You sit in your little bedroom ranting about people in boxing, but these people don't care about you. If you die tomorrow, how many of them will actually come to your funeral? I'm willing to bet good money that if you die tomorrow, not that I wish any harm on you, but I'm sure there's plenty of people in boxing who will smile about it. Not me. I just, you know, what what you say about me in your videos doesn't really make any difference to me. I'm not upset by what you said, you know, trying to say that I'm gay this and gay that. But when it was face to face, you never had this energy. You ran off like a, like a snake. You know, you just slivered off like a snake. But obviously a lot of people in boxing, yeah, you're hurting their feelings. But what what are you doing with your life? Like, you can't even go to press conferences. I can. You can't. You know, cause it doesn't matter if you've boxed before. Like, you know, if you come face to face with some of these people, it's going to be problems. It's going to... And I'm not, I'm not saying... And the thing is, yeah, look, I'm not denying that you can beat certain people up. I don't think you can beat me up. But, yeah, I'm sure you can beat up some of these people in boxing that you talk about. But you can't do it because they'll just get the police involved. That's why you're scared to confront them. Because if you, if you lay a hand on them... I mean, as much as I would enjoy watching you break Coogan Cassius's jaw in public... First of all, I'd enjoy that. If you'd done that and go on camera, I would pay money to see the footage. I would pay pay-per-view money to see that. But obviously you're not you're not stu you're not gonna do it because you know the police are gonna you're gonna get involved. And as much as I'd enjoy it, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people would enjoy watching Time Booth break Coogan Cassius's jaw. That would be a um, hilarious, amazing footage. But you haven't got the guts to do it because you're a former professional boxer. Your hands are registered as weapons, and you know you're you're gonna get you're gonna face charges because of it because of it. So you can talk all you like all this tough talk on the internet. But when you met, when you met Coogan Cassius, you never showed that same kind of energy. You, you know, what is all this be safe, be safe? What does that mean? Be safe, what? Look both ways before you cross the road? Do not talk to strangers? I mean, what does be safe mean? So anyway, Time Booth, I'm sure you and me are going get, to get it on at some point. It's just going to look embarrassing for you if you don't. I haven't forgotten about you. I'm going to keep the pressure going on your neck. You know, you're a little rat. I know you don't like me, and it's okay, you don't have to like me. But if you don't get in the ring with me, then that's that's you done. Embarrassing. So it's only a matter of time, time, Booth. I'm keeping the pressure up on your neck. Try not to choke. 
you know, watch what you eat, you know, next time you eat, try not to choke on your food from all the pressure I'm putting on your neck. You know, like, like I say, I'm, I'm just going to keep the pressure going. So have fun. Keep thinking about me. Keep talking about me. When you see me, do not run off like you ran last time. Like when I told him, I told you, I told you that you ran like a coward when a Anthony Joshua put it on you. You know, I told you that. And then as soon as I told him that, he wants to get angry. Like he got up out of the coffee shop and he stormed off. No talking, he just stormed off. Probably went around the corner and started crying. Just like you cried when AJ kicked you out of the gym. You're a loser time. Pure and simple. And, you know, you know the, the situation between you and me is just getting started. You know, got some man walking behind me. I don't know why. Oh, is it time? No, no, it's not time. Oof. No, no. You know, obviously Tyron's too much of a loser to come out of his, you know, whatever little bed set he lives in. You know, drinking his little, his little alcohol, his little echo falls. I mean, all this dude does is just sit at home, no life, no woman, no friends, nothing. When's the last time you see him go to an actual boxing show? You know, when was the last time, you know, when was the last time someone in boxing had anything good to say about him? But just keep sitting, sitting in your little grovel, your little bed set. Drink yourself into stupidity And if you get in the ring with me Listen, I'm going to beat you up I'm telling you If I come in there fit you, You're going to have problems That's going to be embarrassing Getting chased out the ring First, first, first Anthony Joshua chased you out the gym And second of all I'm going to I'm gonna chase you out the gym Send you packing your bags And go Just go back to your little council grovel set You know Just After I knock you out After I beat you up what is going to become of this guy? Well, let me see. Straighten your life out. Stop doing these silly videos. Try and try and find something to do. Get a job. Go down the job centre. You know, do something. But right now, whatever you're doing with your sad little life, you are wasting your life away, son. And I should know, I've wasted years of my life. I'm not denying that. But I've turned my life around. I'm doing positive stuff. I'm getting out there and meeting people. And what are you doing? Watching pornography all day, as you said, as as you you said as much yourself, you know. So be honest about that. Go on your your little YouTube channel and be honest. Tell everyone what you told me in private. Come on, tell tell us tell us all what you said, you know. But anyway, you know, this is just getting started. This is just just getting started. The momentum is going to keep building. But anyway, I got to catch a train. So take care, everyone. Thanks for watching.